Good morning and welcome to the Home Base Business Success Podcast. Good morning, everybody. This is Ralph Lindy from RalphLindy.com and the Home Base Business Success Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about transitioning to an online business. And uh, uh, I, I started thinking about this topic actually about, oh, when was it, about 15 years ago? <laughs> a long time because we live out in the country. And it's not, it's a beautiful place to live, but it is not the best place for doing business in your typical face to face type business environment. A lot of deer, a lot of raccoon, a lot of possum, not too many flesh and blood human beings. And those that are around here are generally kind of on the broke side. So not the best place to be doing business. A great place to go broke opening a business, but not the best place to be doing business. So we wanted to be doing business in this area. I did not want to have to sell out and move to the city. I had moved to the country from the city uh, quite a few years ago. Did not want to have to make that transition from the country back to the city. So we started exploring online business because I knew, okay, I was fairly new to the internet at that time, but I knew that there was a lot of potential uh, to having your own online business. And I know a lot of folks are thinking that way now after what we've been through with uh, 2020, 2021, you know, businesses being shut down and people being told, okay, we have to social distance and oh, this, that, and the other thing. And now we got fuel prices that are going up and people cutting back on their travel and cutting back on their shopping time. So I know there's a lot of people out there who are thinking about how do I transition from a physical business to an online business. And what I'm going to do in this podcast is I'm going to throw out some tips. Actually, two major tips here. One is going to be the easy way to give your business an online presence and to start actually doing business online. And then the second one is the not-so-easy way. It's really it's it's not exactly rocket science, but it, there is a learning curve to it. So we'll be going through both of these uh, suggestions. And let's just start out with the easy first. The easy way to either transition to an online business or just start up an online business from scratch is not having to worry about building your own online platform but just using a platform that's already there, uh, doing business with third-party platforms. And by this, I mean places like eBay, Etsy, Fiverr, just to name a few. If you're into retail sales, if you've got something that you don't mind shipping within the United States or, or globally, or if you got digital products or products that you can... Uh, produce that are in a digital format where you don't have to worry about shipping. Just sell them and, and ship them. Uh, you know, uh, that, that saves a lot of headache and a lot of money right there. But uh, you can possibly get started using a third-party platform, third-party service. And a concrete example of this, of a face-to-face -face business that was also doing business online using a third-party platform is a little flea market that we used to uh, go to. It's, it's, uh, it's changed hands now, and they've changed the way they do business. But uh, a few years ago, we were in the flea market shopping because, you know, that's what country folk do. We get wild and crazy and go to a flea market on the weekend. 
And uh, we were shopping around in the flea market, looking around, and I noticed the owner was watching the computer screen, and she was talking with one of her employees, and they both seemed pretty excited. So uh, I, I started listening, and they were talking about a listing that they had on eBay. And they said, boy, you know, they, they had a bidding war going on this certain piece of merchandise. And, I mean, the bidding was just going crazy, and they were happy as could be. But what they had done, which I thought at that time was a stroke of genius, they had their face-to-face -face business already set up. But they also wanted to take advantage of any monies that could be made online. So what they were doing is that so when stuff came into the flea market, stuff that people were wanting to just give away, throw away, or sell for like 25 cents, they would take it, and then if they thought that they could clean it up and sell it for like 10 times more, 100 times more, they would go ahead and they would take pictures of that piece of merchandise and uh listed on eBay as uh what what's the what's the terminology here vintage products antique products they were also selling electronics that came in and they were actually doing quite well in the online part of the market so yeah they did that they had their online business pretty much pre-made for them using eBay and, and of course you know getting on that site is uh, I, I haven't tried it too recently but uh, I imagine it's still you know free to sign up free to create your seller's account the only drawback is that uh, there are fees associated with the services you know they're they're probably on eBay I imagine they're still listing fees Etsy I don't know if they have listing fees, but they do have seller fees. And uh, so you have to pay those fees, so you have to be reasonably sure that you know your, your item, whatever it is, is worth a few pennies to even list it. And then if you do sell, then you're going to be paying a seller's fee as well. So that's the drawback. But the main advantage that I see is that this is, uh, usually it's a fast way to get started in online business and let's use the, ana the analogy of a person opening up a business in the flesh and blood you know brick brick and mortar world and uh, you want to open up something let's just call this a snack shack and you want to find the cheapest place possible to open up your snack shack so you find a little place uh, that's you know re rents are reasonable but there's not much traffic there but you think okay I'll just you know put a sign in the front yard or uh, put an ad in the paper and we'll draw traffic to us uh, that's gonna take you a little bit longer to get started out because you've got a place that is isolated not many people know about it and uh, you have to worry about draw driving traffic to your door now c compare that contrast that with a person that opens a business in a busy shopping mall you know traffic is guaranteed the rent is going to be a lot higher but the traffic is guaranteed and that's like the difference between opening up a business using a third-party platform that already has the traffic and opening up your business on your own independent platform that you're building from scratch uh, you can do it we've we've done it both ways and we currently do it both ways we work with third-party uh, platforms we also build our own platforms uh, and, and the advantage to having the third party approach is that if it's a good platform they have customers already coming onto that platform and if you do a good job of building your site if you do a good job of describing yourself your business what you can what you have to offer you, it's a lot easier to find customers on the third-party sites than it is in the beginning, you know, trying to build your own site from scratch. But, I mean, we do it both ways. But the thing is, with the third-party platforms, 
Uh, the fees can be high. Uh, we use a uh, an advisor's network. Uh, my wife and I, we give advice, uh, coaching, personal coaching, uh, uh, love and relationships, spiritual coaching, things of that nature. And we first got started in that industry using a third-party platform. And the thing is that it was free for us to create our accounts. But once we started making sales, once we started having clients come in the door, and that was pretty neat because we had clients coming into the door, virtually speaking, from day one using that third-party approach. But the thing is, is that the platform takes 60% of our revenue, and we get to figure out how we're going to live on the other 40%. So when you're using the third-party platforms, you've got to take that into consideration and make sure that you're pricing yourself accordingly. Uh, you know, we do uh, the third-party approach. We do the private approach. And what comes to our coaching services, you know, uh, on the third-party platform, our prices are three times higher because we only are allowed to take what's 40%, keep 40% of the revenue. And uh, so, yeah, we, we raise our price accordingly. But on our private network, you know, we're quite a bit cheaper. And uh, I use that in some of my online advertising, saying, hey, you know, we are a small site, but, you know, we're also a lot cheaper than what you're going to be paying on that corporate site. How do I know? Because I'm on that corporate site as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, do a little bit of Googling, search for me, uh, find me online, and you can save a ton of money if you really like the advice that we give. So, yeah, the third-party services, they are good as far as uh, getting started right away. Not much of a learning curve. Uh, people can find you if you're good at what you do, if you give a good service. If you're able to communicate well, if you're able to write up a good listing, uh, it's a lot easier for people to find you on the third-party sites than it is when you first open up your own private site. The drawback, though, is going to be the fees. So, yeah, be sure to research that. But, yeah, you can find third-party platforms in a lot of different industries, you know, advisor industry, marketing uh, retail sales, uh, online content creation, things like that. Uh, so if you're wanting to transition from a face-to-face -face business to an online business or incorporate, try to figure out a way to be doing face-to-face -face business and online business too, uh, third-party services can help. Now let's talk about the little more difficult way to do it. And this is the build your own site, you know, using, uh, finding, a, buying your own domain or grabbing a free domain. Now, the free domain way of doing this, uh, that's a lot cheaper, of course, but it looks a lot less more professional. Uh, a example of a private domain is going to be like, you know, my domain, uh, ralphlindy.com. Uh, it's pretty easy to say. It rolls off the tongue pretty well. And uh, I mean, I pay fourteen ninety nine a year for that. <laughs> uh, not that expensive, but uh, you know, it's a little bit of an investment. Now, if I wanted to be doing it on the cheap and get it totally free, then it wouldn't be ralphlindy.com. The website would be something like ralphlindy.siterubrics.blahblah.com. And... <laughs> Or, or something of that nature, and it doesn't roll off the tongue as well, it doesn't sound as professional, and it's a little harder for people to remember. So if you're wanting to just mention it on the phone or mention it on a podcast, you know, having a free website is, uh, it, it's cheap, but, you know, you get what you pay for. But if... Uh, if you're flat broke, if you need to get started online and you think using a free uh, blog, of a free website is for you, you can do it. And I mean, we did that too back in our early days. And we did the blogger.com uh, free websites. 
And, uh, yeah, there is a learning curve to all this. Now, uh, first of all, you have to figure out how to build your online website. And uh, I, I've done it through a variety of different ways. Uh, I tried, what was it, GoDaddy.com uh, back when they were offering a 99-cent sale on domains. And I went ahead, I grabbed that. I thought, wow, that sounded great. And then I found out, you know, I had no, no, I, I did not have a clue as to how to build my website. I didn't get any, uh, really, ins- no instructions, no classes uh, to speak of, and I just didn't know what to do with it. I just ended up buying it, having it, and then doing nothing with with it because I couldn't really figure it out. I was brand new to online marketing back in those days. And so I just I just let it slide. Now, uh, if you're wanting to build your own site and you're wanting to go ahead and have a paid professional looking site and you want to learn how to do it yourself, you know, one service that, that I am very fond of and, and a program that I am very much a part of is Wealthy Affiliate. And I will give that a slight plug here. Uh, You can find Wealthy Affiliate proudly advertised on our main blog, ralphlindy.com. But what Wealthy Affiliate is, is a site that's been helping entrepreneurs get started in online business for the past 16 years. And they uh, they provide you with the domains. The, if you want to buy your domain name, they will uh, help you do that. Uh, they'll they'll do that for you. They provide the hosting, and even more importantly than all of that, they will give you instructions. And I mean step by step instructions on how to build your first domain, how to set that up, how to build your website, how to start doing business online. And uh, Wealthy Affiliate, they have a huge community now that is global. And you've got, if you need help, like you know, I have, I still do, if I have a question, I can go to the Wealthy Affiliate community and I can get answers from people that uh, are like six-figure earners, seven-figure earners, you know, folks that know what they're doing, folks that know what, how to give good advice when it comes to running your online business. So I am a big fan of Wealthy Affiliate. Uh, some folks, if, if all you want to do is just open up a single website uh, the premium cost of Wealthy Affiliate may seem a little high compared to other providers, but in my opinion, you get a lot more service, you get a lot more help. But it's $49 uh, a month to become a premium member of Wealthy Affiliate, but for that price tag, you can build up to 10 premium websites. So if you want to be a serial entrepreneur, uh, that is a good way to go. Plus, you get all kinds of classes, training, uh, research tools, content creation tools. You get the Wealthy Affiliate community that is there ready to help you. You can talk to the owners. It is really, I think, a fantastic program. And uh, for me, it is worth, you know, it was worth the $49 a month until I decided to upgrade, and now I'm at the Premium Plus level, and I pay by the year, so I save a little bit there. But yeah, they've also got the Premium Plus level, where you can build up to 50 premium websites, and you know get all the bells and whistles, a lot more training, a lot more uh, live classes than what you get as a premium member. So, I mean, you, you can go... Two different ways there with Wealthy Affiliate on the paid level. And if you just want to check it out for free, you can join Wealthy Affiliate as a free member, a free starter member. Get yourself a free domain. It's going to be, instead of like ralphlindy.com, it's going to be like ralphlindy.siterubrics.com. 
But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a basic website, not all the bells and whistles, but it will give you a taste of what the Wealthy Affiliate program is like. And, of course, one thing is, it's uh, with a name like Wealthy Affiliate, you would expect it to be big in the affiliate marketing industry. And it is. They do have their own referral plan. And uh, you can make money referring people to Wealthy Affiliate, whether you are a free member or a premium member or a premium plus member. So it's, it's a really good program if you're looking to get started in online business and you don't have a clue if you're searching the internet uh, listening to podcasts watching YouTube videos yeah you're going to get a lot of different information you're going to get some conflicting information you're going to be getting some information from people who know what they're talking about and also from folks that don't know what they're talking about and uh, the, the advantage that I see with Wealthy Affiliate is you've got everything on the same platform they, they call it like uh, the Wealthy Affiliate University, because it is. It's jam-packed with a lot of training, a lot of help, a lot of information. And, I mean, they can take you step by step through the process of creating your first website, uh, driving traffic to your site, uh, SEO, uh, becoming an online entrepreneur, just take you step by step through the whole process. And their continuing education is great. We've got like seven-figure earners that are teaching us uh, other ways that we can be doing online business, other things that we can be doing, other things we can be marketing, other industries that we can be getting into. And for the serious entrepreneur that wants to do business online, I mean, Wealthy Affiliate has a lot of value so you know you can check them out absolutely free go to my main blog i i've got a got a sidebar ad you can click on and i'll take you to uh you know my affiliate page and just sign up free of charge see what you think so yeah you can do that way it's 49.99 if you want to be a paid premium member or no 49 dollars i think uh but uh, there are cheaper ways you can go, of course. Uh, we, my first uh, paid uh, uh, platform that, uh, that, that I bought, it was through a company called Webs, webs.com. And at that time, it, they were charging $23 a month for one website. And I thought that was okay because the system was just so easy to use and it was uh, a very easy a block editor. Just you know, drop, paste, uh, type in your information, and I mean, you could get a real nice professional website going in a very short period of time. The problem was when I decided, okay, I wanted to go from just one website to three websites. Then I found I was I was paying like what sixty some bucks, almost seventy dollars a month for just three websites and I was not really getting any training I mean they were they were doing a lot of the work for me but I wasn't learning how to do it myself and how to really tweak the websites myself and it it, it got kind of expensive when we got over you know two uh, websites and when we got to three websites I began looking for something a little bit more reasonable and that's when I discovered Wealthy Affiliate but yeah, the, if all you want is just a single website, something like Webs can work out for you. A uh, nice, professionally made, uh, professional-looking website. And uh, uh, it's not, not as steep a learning curve. And they, they, do, a lot, they do a lot of the work for you. Uh, other places you can look at as far as buying your own domain and hosting and all that... Dreamhost does a good job. Bluehost does a good job. Uh, And they may be a little bit cheaper than Wealthy Affiliate. But again, at least when I was using those services, they just did not have the same level of education. Uh, They didn't teach you how to do it. They just... uh, With me, with those other services, there was a lot of guesswork involved in setting up that domain. And when you're getting started out in online business, you really don't want 
to be going through a lot of guesswork. It's it's better to have somebody that knows telling you, you know, the best practices for setting this up and teaching you how to do it. And again, with Wealthy Affiliate, you get that training. With the others, you really don't. So, uh, Now, the pros and the cons of building your own website. The main pro about having your own website is that this is your real estate in the online community. This is like having your, your, your shop online and it's your baby. Uh, when you're borrowing from third-party services like uh, eBay, Etsy, Fiverr, uh, even if you have a, a, a basic business page listing on Facebook or Meta, uh, if they decide that they don't like you, if they get a lot of complaints for whatever reason, if they decide they don't like your industry, you know, they can shut you down without notice. When you have your own website, you can still get shut down. Okay, yes, uh, let's be honest about that. You get a lot of complaints. Uh, your host might decide not to host you anymore, but it's less likely. And, I mean, that is your real estate online. And if something happens, like if you're doing business on a third-party service, and that third-party service just shuts down without notice then, I mean, you're out of business through no fault of your own. When you have your own website, that website is going to keep going. I mean, and it's, it's a little bit of money investing in it for, to, to buy your domain name, like mine, it cost me fourteen ninety nine a year, and then for the hosting. But it's worth it. I think it's worth it because, again, if you want to compare an online business to a physical business. Uh, in the brick-and-mortar world, if you're renting your business property, what's that going to set you back? You know, 400 a month? That is radically low. I mean, my dad used to pay 400 a month when he was renting business property, oh my God, about 30-some years ago. And, and today, that piece of property would probably be worth $2,000 a month. But I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot more expensive. The the cost of doing business in the real physical world is going to be a lot higher than getting your own piece of online real estate, you know, in the cyber world. In the cyber world, you know, when when you think about the possibility of spending anywhere from five hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars a month in rent, it makes it look you know, it makes fourteen ninety nine a year seem radically cheap, and twenty, fifty, a hundred bucks a month look radically cheap as well. So, if you're wanting to transition to an online business and you're wanting to do it, you know, in a more professional manner, then I would suggest not using a free domain, but setting yourself up with your own private domain and find some good hosting. It will cost you a little bit per month, but not as, mu not as much as opening a shop in the physical brick-and-mortar world. So, yeah, the, the pro about having your own website, that's you. That's your space, your, your place online. Now, the drawback to having uh, an online business, there is a steep learning curve, especially if you are building your own site. For those of you out there that have gone ahead, done that, built your own sites, maybe you've built multiple sites, you think there's nothing to it. But speaking as a guy who was once an absolute beginner, um, I, I, needed, I needed advice. I needed some training. I needed somebody to really tell me how to do that that job of building that domain and getting it set up. So yeah, there can be a steep learning curve if you are an absolute beginner. But again, if you're using a good uh, a, 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 a good program like Wealthy Affiliate that's willing to teach you step by step how to do it, 
then, I mean, that takes a lot of the stress out of that steep learning curve. And uh, they can really help you get started with confidence and get started a lot more quickly. So that's two ways that I can think of as far as transitioning to an online business. If you've got a uh, already existing uh, brick and mortar business, you want to start doing some business online, then just sit down, brainstorm, do a little bit of creativity, figure out what goods or services that you can offer on uh, in, in the online world, and then you can start out you know, with a combination of different things. You can start out using the third-party platforms. If you got stuff that you can sell on eBay, then get yourself an eBay listing and get going. If you're into, like, handcrafted stuff, antique stuff, vintage stuff, uh, Etsy might be a good fit for you as well. Uh, If you're into, like, digital products and services, uh, then you probably... You might already have your online business going, but, you know, Fiverr is another place that you can be doing business, and, you know, there's a whole lot more. And then what you can do, in addition to having your third-party platforms, go ahead and start building your own platform on the side, and uh, as you're learning how to create your, your own independent website, and building it up, and learning how to drive traffic to it, and learning all the best practices for SEO, and making sure that people can find you online. Uh, while you're you're learning and doing that, you can potentially also be making money on the third-party platform. So that's why we started out doing a combination of things. My my first uh, experience of opening up our first website. It was a free blog, and my goodness, it seems like it took me three months to make my first sale because it just didn't have the traffic. I was promoting it hot and heavy on social media and not doing a very good job of promoting it on social media. I knew nothing about email marketing, so I wasn't doing that. And yeah, our first free website, it, it fine, we made our first sale after three months, but if you're thinking about making money, you know, right now, doing it more quickly, then the third party way can be more effective. And I mean, the, the minute we opened our eBay store, I started packing it with listings and we were making sales on a daily basis. So, I mean, there's the difference between a third-party platform that's already built, set up, ready to go, don't have to reinvent the wheel, and building your own platform without help. Now, if you're building your own platform with some help, then that saves you some time, saves you some frustration, and can help you get going with a lot more confidence a little bit more quickly. But, uh, yeah... Uh, Those are my two suggestions, the easy and the not-so-easy way. Now, we're going to end this podcast. We've got a little music I'm going to play here by Hunter and the Dirty Jacks, Rock and Roll Soul. We will be back tomorrow talking about handling rejection in home-based business, in online business, in network marketing, especially if you're into that. We do get a lot of rejections. You have to go out there. You have to talk to people. You get told no a lot of times. How do you handle being told no a lot of times? So what we're going to talk about in the next podcast, handling rejection. And we'll be talking a little bit about the go for no philosophy. And if you're into network marketing, the go for no philosophy can be a lifesaver. So that's all for today. Thanks for dropping by. This is Hunter and the Dirty Jacks, Rock and Roll Soul. We'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.
that's what I need to see. Voice of an angel and I tame up for a king. No rhythm to speak. I wish to God you could sing. Find a hill in the Troy in a real world style. We start a religion with a launch code smile. And I want to go where the back of my soul. Here's who I need. Make me home. 